Yo, Elliot, I recently in May broke up with my fiance, who I was with for about eight and a half years. You about to get married, bro. Uh, but broke up. I've been staying single and not even considering dates up until a couple of weeks ago. I don't feel financially stabilized yet. I moved here to Texas in May, but things are on the up and up. I've been thinking about going to some dates and just getting laid, partially because my relationship was mostly sexless for the last year. I also think it's a good move for me to make if I'm trying to mentally and emotionally move on. And I know getting laid can really enhance my drive in life as well. Question is, do you think it's a good move? <laughs> Some tell me yes. Others tell me to focus on my career and let things happen naturally. I don't go out often, but when I do, I get good attention from women. And I know I could get something going. I just choose not to most of the time. I am career and money focused a good 90% of the time. I know I don't need to get laid, but I think it would be a good confidence booster in my eyes. Well, you already know the answer to your question because you want to do it and you're going to do it. I think you're going to do it regardless of what I or your friends say. And so I'm going to just with that good faith that you're going to go get laid, <laughs> right? Like I, I, I sense in your question, you're like, why not? Like, it's going to do this. You're giving, you're giving yourself all the reasons why. Why this? Why this? Why this? Why that? Right? I would, I personally, as your coach, working with you here in this program, you know my position on things, right? Like, I've asserted that I believe that sex is to be reserved for marriage and for good reason. I give all my good reasons. And there are guys that will give you all the good reasons why I'm wrong, right? I'm not trying to convince anybody one way or the other I just got my opinion right based on my experience and based on my wisdom and based on what I've seen happen with the men in this program and so on and so forth I say hey do like some of your friends are telling you focus on your career and let things happen naturally right don't don't go looking for it but in this situation I think you just need to go do it <laughs> I think you need to make an exper experiment out of it you were with a woman for eight and a half years, one woman for eight and a half years. You were ready to get married. Apparently, she stopped wanting to have sex with you, and so you broke it off, right? Or, and I'm sure that was just the tip of the iceberg. I'm sure there were other reasons why it didn't work out for you. You've been by yourself for, what, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, right? Six months. For six months, you've been by yourself, focusing on yourself, doing your own thing, but you want to have sex. You, wanna get you say you want to get laid. I would do this. I would try to make an experiment out of it. In fact, I'm curious. I am curious. I'm curious of what kind of experiment you could make out of this or what, what would transpire, what would unfold if you do actually go out there and do that. Because a number of, you could discover a number of things about yourself, right? You weren't with other women for almost 10 years, right? You may discover things about yourself that you didn't know as it relates to sex with women, right? You may... It's 10 years is a long time. You may learn things about women out there that you didn't know for a long time, right? Like if I had to get out in the dating game, if I had to get out there and date after damn near 30 years of being with the same woman, I will have, a, I have to learn a whole, a whole lot of new things. I live vicariously through you guys, just to be completely transparent. I don't know anything. I just see where you're at. I see what you're dealing with. I assess the situation and I use some of my experience and wisdom to guide you, but they're just my opinions. A lot of my opinions are backed by thousands of years of tradition, right? We've only been ideologically subverted for about the past 100 years, and this whole uh, idea of free sex is really actually very new, right? Um, so I tend to lean on tradition. I tend to try to lean on what has worked Marriage and family is not working. You seem like a guy that wants to be married and have a family, right? You had a fiance. Marriage and family is not working because of sexual, so-called se sexual liberation, right? I saw somebody comment on one of my videos. I think it was a woman. Was commenting on one of my videos that I was talking about, you know, women preserving their value by not being promiscuous. But at the same time, it requires that men aren't being promiscuous either, right? Because it takes two to tango. Right. And so if men are complaining, right, and, I, and some of you guys complain, I've seen you complain. I don't complain because I have a good life. So I don't really complain. I just assert. I just say certain things. Uh, and as it relates to relationships lasting, we know even scientifically that 
marriages fail when there's too much promiscuity before marriage, right? They, I saw recently even there's this chart with the amount of men a woman sleeps with and, and their ability to pair bond. Relation, you're guaranteed more divorce if she's having more sex out there, right? So as men who are the rightful protectors of women, right? Adam and Eve, right? She came from him. It was his job to protect her. He failed. In our responsibility to protect women, we have to pre help prevent this mess so that why? Marriage and family works again, right? I think our culture is so hedonistic, so wrapped up in good feelings and busting nuts and pleasure that we completely forego and completely ignore, completely forget and denigrate the family. And when it comes to the health of an individual, when it comes to the health of a community, when it comes to the health of a nation, a culture, it all depends on the family. This is why Satan's greatest attack is against the family. In the last days, the family will be the, the final battle. The final battle will be for the family. And you know that we're in the final battle right now. This is why I'm wearing St. Michael today, the archangel. Defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. So all of this so-called sexual liberation... All of, you know, this promiscuity, all of the birth control, contraception, abortion, feminism, they're all attacks against the family because the family doesn't work when there's contraception, abortion, promiscuity, divorce laws, you know, this whole idea that we can marry and remarry and remarry and remarry as much as we want, so much so that people just aren't getting married anymore. Why? Because family has been destroyed. The last bastion of hope is the family, and that's where we are being attacked most gravely, right? So family doesn't work. Why? Because sexual liberation. And so, you know, I just pose that to you as a as something to reflect on, right? Like, do you do you want to get married, right? Like, it seemed like you wanted to, and I think it'd be good for you to get married to someone that is compatible with you. You don't want to be unevenly yoked, right? So if you are going out there and you're determined to fornicate, you got to ask yourself, what is the end goal, right? The, is the end goal, like you're saying, you know, it'll be good for my confidence? Okay. Uh, I guess that's okay, right? And, and maybe you can live with that. But where are we going with it, right? Like sex has become entertainment. And many of the things that I say sound foreign to people. They're like, what kind of boomer shit are you talking, Elliot, right? But when sex is relegated to entertainment, we end up with sterile, transient sexual partners, which is essentially what homosexuals do. Sterile sex with women is like homosexual sex. So they go hand in hand, right? I'm not knocking homosexuals. I'm just showing how all of this leads to the breakdown of the family and the breakdown of society, right? Homosexual sex and sterile sex are exactly the same. You're, you're just using somebody else's body to bust a nut. Homosexual sex is a little bit different in that you're, you're blowing your load in somebody who can't, fer you can't fertilize their seed, right? But when you're having sex with a woman and you're blowing your load into a plastic bag, or she's on chemical castrators, uh, then you also are basically having homosexual sex. All sex that that is not procreative and not done within the not within within the stronghold of the marriage covenant and family, all sex outside of that is basically sterile, transient homosexual sex. You're just jerking off with somebody's body. That's right, Rob. E. Michael Jones talks about this. He's the one that brought it to my attention. So what are you doing? Ultimately, what are you doing? And that's really what I pose to men these days because that's where we struggle the most. Men don't know what we're doing. We have no real purpose. We have no real mission. We have no real plan. And a big part of it is because we have no real families anymore. I'm a zealot for this. And I'm going to keep being one too. I'm, I'm, writing, I'm finishing up a book right now on this and I'm probably going to start a new program about it. Uh, focused on patriarchy, rebuilding the patriarchy, father's rule, making families great again, right? And it goes, it, it requires men to be strong first and to put women back in their place. 
women aren't just going to go back into their place that easily. They need to see that men are worthy to follow and listen to and submit to so that they would they could then relax and yield back into their true natural role as mother, wife, homemaker, caretaker, nurture, right? But they can't do that today if men are weak. Why would I don't I don't blame a woman. I don't I can't blame women for being so hard up, so hardcore, strong and independent because men are fucking weak. What, you, what, what how am I going to relax into this man's frame when he don't even know what he's doing? He has no plan for himself. But when you're a man who's on a, who has a plan, when you're a man, and when I say a plan, I'm talking specifically about family, right? Family planning, right? If you're a man with a plan and you're dedicated to that plan, a woman will very, she, d depending on your, who you are, right? Because you can't be a slap dick and just go around saying this. One woman was complaining on one of my videos the other day too. I read her comment. She says, yeah, but what if I have a trad guy who only sits around playing video games? Well, he's just trad at the lips. He's just get playing lip service. He's not doing the damn thing. But when she sees you dedicated to your plan, to your mission, to your purpose as a patriarch, this is, this is, this is our vocation as men. We have two primary vocations as men, and we can choose one or the other, monk or marriage. That's my opinion, right? And that's the opinion of the early Christian fathers as well, patriarchs and whatnot. That's patriarchy. Men who dedicate their lives to the, to the, to the, to the growth of a family and men that de dedicate themselves to devotion to the Lord, right? Anything else in between is sort of a perversion, in my opinion. So go out, go get laid. You know, I've had a lot of guys tell me this. I've had... I've had guys in this program that have slept with hundreds of women. Hundreds. Hundreds. <laughs> That's wild. In fact, when I was at the 21 convention uh, earlier this month, last month, late last month, I was at the 21 convention, they had one speaker who slept with a thousand women. Do you know what he was up on stage basically saying? Eh, it's not really worth it. Every guy that goes out there and spends a portion of his life dedicated to getting laid Afterwards says, eh, you know, it's not really worth it. I kind of wish I just found a girl and settled down and made a family. Men, men, men are doing that. Much less women. Women, that should be their natural, that's a woman's rightful place. As a man, we have to come to that. We have to, no, you know, pun of the word. But we have, to, we have to come to realize that, and I think, a little differently, right? Because there's less risk for us as there are for women. women. Women, there's a natural risk there for them, right? They're naturally more vulnerable than we are. There's tremendous risk there for women when they lay back and open their bodies. All kinds of risk. And not just pregnancy. Um, because they're, 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 they're opening themselves up. Men are diving in. Women are opening up. When you open yourself up, there's, there's a big difference between giving somebody food here and someone who eats the food right here i'm giving you my food well, i mean it's, you're taking something off your plate that's all it is you know you're just a little bit less of your you have a little bit less right now right you blow your load you're a little bit less you're a little bit less of a man once you blow your load you know that you know how you feel after you blow your load so i'm just gonna give i'm gonna give some of my stuff away to her but to the but the receiver well i mean it gets all inside her it gets all inside her and, and becomes something right it could become a baby but also Emotional turmoil, mental turmoil. We know that women that are promiscuous have more mental problems and, and stuff like that, end up more depressed, so on and so forth. So it's worse. It's bad for both. In my, in my opinion, fornication is bad for both. But it, of course, it's worse for women. There's no question about that. But all the men that spent many years of their lives, you know, riding the, you can't say riding the cock carousel, right? What we riding, <laughs> right? Riding the opposite of the cock carousel. But out there having, having a lot of sex, they end up, they end up later, Dan is even saying it right now. We got somebody who's asserting, I slept with a lot of women in my 20s. If anything, it ruined my respect for women. Yeah, right? How could you, how could you feel the same way towards women if you've been using them like tissues, right? It's a shame, right? But it's up to us. It's up to us as men, right? You, Dan, you lose respect for women. Yeah but it takes two to tango. And so I know I have this grand, I have a grand vision, a grand view of things. It doesn't mean that I'm right or things are gonna go that way, but I'm gonna stick by it, I'll die on this hill.
But then when we stop behaving this way, women will fall into line. When we stop behaving promiscuously and treating sex like entertainment and basically being homos, uh, then women will, they'll have no choice but to respond. The problem is we're reacting to women instead of them reacting to us. That's what feminism has done. We got to turn it around so that women re re respond to us. And the way we do that is by taking back our power. And the way you take back your power is stop fornicating. So anyway, that's it. That's my opinion on that, bro. Uh, I would like to know how that unfolds for you, dude. Let me know. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.